connection that way and not a our Wi-Fi was just switched to fiber and it's still working itself out and Discord has almost crashed twice since I've been in this call kind of way, you know? Fibior. Hello everyone. Are we are we ready? Are we are we good? Uh -huh. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, um, Who remembers what happened last time? I remember where we left off. Okay, that's I also good. remember where we left off. <laughs> Let's go a little bit back before that, if we can. Um, I guess um, we could work backwards. Oh. Do we want to work backwards? I remember. Don't worry, I remember. Okay. Um, we went to the campgrounds. Camp campgrounds. Campground campground? Is that what we settled on? Yeah, it was campground campground. Uh, campground campground and we attended the uh what we found out was the fundraiser for the family whose house burned down the scarlet family um <clears throat> sorry i don't know where that came from <laughs> um, <laughs> was it a cough was it a sneeze we don't know anyways somewhere um, in between we go to this family's fundraiser and there's like a weird clam man and his assistant and like a lot of people in town uh, some we recognize, some we don't because we've never met them before. Uh, and they all like pass a basket around collecting donations. Um, and there's a lot of like coupons thrown out that everyone seems to be avoiding. That um, I, I forgot believe about the Iris, coupons. Iris and Cosmo stuff every pocket they have, or in Cosmo's case, their shirt. Oh, yeah, Cosmo uh, is because... just literally bursting with coupons as they shuffled around. <laughs> lack of pockets you know you make do um but it's for a puppet emporium or something um so oh, we've collected um, no it's the, wood, a it's the wooden palace oh, they're, they're mannequins yes, they're mannequins my apologies you're fine the mannequins fine. um that's a, that's a little blue ring i'm wondering i'm wondering okay i it think it's fine anyways um we talked to some people uh, we talk about R Rick's sick Rick's big dick, and we have a boat tour with him tomorrow, um, right, which is which is technically today because um, it's currently three in the morning. Uh, we end up after talking with everyone, going to town to find a place to stay for the evening um chris and cosmo end up splitting the cost of a hotel room and iris is going to sleep in their van uh except you know we, we gotta wake up at 3 a.m because we wanted to do some snooping uh and when that happens iris wakes up to um what is this child's name eloise know, uh eloise is just like here and kind of greasy in iris's van Greasy and feral. Greasy, uh, greasy feral. feral. Well, she may Looking have always like been feral. Was it three o'clock? I ha I thought it was distinctly before three o'clock, and well, so we, so we were gonna do snooping at three. So we were getting up a little bit before three. I'm right. Sure it was I like don't. Two forty-five. Okay, I was gonna say I don't know if Cosmo and Chris are even like up yet. That was the big like, whoa, -oh, gamers. Yeah. <laughs> whoa. -oh. Um, I think so the last thing I said aloud <laughs> was for um to call Cosmo for my Correct. phone. Yep. Uh, okay, so that was, solid. That was, that was a pretty good recap. Just a few little extra tidbits. Uh, the reason that you're going to Sick Rick's is because you met uh, Percy Fitzsimmons, Sally Fitzsimmons' half-brother, and he was complaining about Sick Rick and the fact that Rick wouldn't let him use his Rick coins, which were used to rent boats. So you went to Sick Rick. Sick Rick had a quest, and his quest was, if you come with me, we'll go to Blinken by the Sea tomorrow, uh, if we have enough, if you guys come, we'll have enough people. I can do the trip. And when we get back, I'll let you see what time Percy cashed the Rick coins in. And you all agreed to that. Uh, and when you got back to the porcelain Dalmatian hotel, um, you met two other characters, stone Porter, the stressed out beyond all recognition receptionist and a weird individual named party frog who claims to be looking for a frog amulet and will pay handsomely for its safe return. Uh, other than that, you you that was a very good little recap here. We're going to dive right in to uh, Cosmo and Chris's hotel room at the ripe <clears throat> minute of 2.46 a.m. Uh, did you guys have an alarm set? Yeah, for um, uh, 2.59, Cosmo's a procrastinator. Mm-hmm. 
So Cosmos uh, so you wanted to you wanted to give yourself one minute of heads up to get to a place halfway across town. Yeah, it was Cosmo's idea to stake out, and it, then Cosmo was just like, "I don't want to wake up at two forty-five. Ooh, <laughs> I can get I ready in one minute." <laughs> I'll say that Chris has an alarm set for uh like two thirty. Cosmo threw because... a pillow at you. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, he hits but, snooze, but yeah. it, and it snooze is till two forty nine. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, it's two forty six, and Cosmo, instead of being woken up by your alarm, you are waking up by. Hey, you're getting a phone call from Iris. Do 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 do. This is your ringtone. I pick up and Iris, I got like three minutes. Come on, man. Help. What? Uh, hello? What? What do you mean help? Um, um well, you know, there's like a like a feral child in my van right now. Um, I'll be right there. Uh, and I hang up and I turn to Chris and I'm just like, uh, Chris, Iris is getting um smacked by a child. We gotta go. Chris is like, <clears throat> just kind of sitting at the desk that's in the hotel room. He's already dressed. He's chilling. Sh- sh- they turn from the bed where they thought you were to <laughs> where you actually are, like like a slow swivel to you in the desk, and they're like, um, uh, Iris, ah, uh, and starts like backing towards the door. Uh, okay. Uh, attacked by we, child, we... and they're li- they're like leaving. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we start making our way down. Yeah, yeah, run. We run. Yeah, we run. We Great. Run. As you all start running, uh, Iris, do you do anything? Like, what is your current? Um, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be prepared for this child to be weird. Um, all right. But I'm not really gonna be doing much, I guess. Yeah. So as you prepare for the child to be weird, your wish is granted pretty quickly. Eloise uh, starts crawling along the floor and then Spider-Man style ascends onto the wall and quickly onto the ceiling. Oh, come on. That's not like a place that you can walk. How am I supposed to, cl- like, come come on. Like, I can mop the floor. I can't mop the ceiling. And as you're complaining about this greasy child on your ceiling, uh, she kind of tilts her head not at an unnatural angle, but she does it very quickly, and she's going to pounce on you. So we are going to roll for combat. Oh, Not you two yet. Can't stop me. I have something. Actually, no. Um, no, no. I'll figure out where you fit in. Just... <laughs> Holy shit. This kid's going to fucking kill me in one hit. Yup. You're a dead man. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, I rolled a I rolled a 14. That's an extreme success, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay, no. that hard success. A hard success? Okay, well I got a 2. Um oh. so Eloise is going to go first. I mean, I guess it makes sense. All right, great. So, Eloise is lunging at you from midair. How would you like to react? Um dodge. <laughs> Great. Yeah, go ahead and roll that. Hard success. Nice. Uh, so what? Is, how do you kind of dodge out of this greasy child flying towards you? Um, well, I assume I was standing, so I'm just going to, like, step to the side a little bit. All right, you take a very simple step to the side as Greaseball flies uh, past you and kind of clutters uh, past your nice little kitchen set over towards, like, where your bed is. Um, getting a little stinky. How would you like to follow up your sick dodge? Um, <laughs> can I leave? Can you exit the van? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> All right. So here's here's how we're gonna do this. Um, eyeing your options, you realize the best chance for you right now is to escape the van. So I'm gonna have you roll dexterity. And Eloise is going to compete it with another attack roll. I got a hard success. Uh, I got an extreme success. All right, sweet. So uh, Eloise is like stamping after you on all fours um, as you make your way over to the door and push it open. And I assume you are holding it shut. 
Um, or no? Are you just booking it? I mean, I was just going to leave, and if she leaves, that's awesome. Okay, great. So you exit your RV. Where do you start running towards? Uh, the hotel. Okay. You start booking it towards the hotel. Uh, Chris and Cosmo, you are on the second floor landing of the hotel. There is a flight of stairs to lead down to the landing, and there's also an elevator. Uh, flight of stairs. Flight of stairs. Okay. You taking them like normal people, or do you want to speed up the process? Uh, oh. I'm taking them two at a time, even though I'm, I'm very short. A, I'm jumping. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's great. That's a good keyword. You can roll jump. Oh, thank you. I think I actually put points in jump. That's I good. didn't. And actually, I don't. Did I? To take them two at a time successfully, I'm going to have you roll dexterity. No. I just won't do that, actually. <laughs> There's no way Cosmo takes stairs two at a time normally. No, they're too short, unfortunately. <laughs> Definitely not going down. No. Okay. That is a... Oh, boy, that's a number. Uh Oh, a regular success for Cosmo. Great. <laughs> I got a 17 and I needed a 20. He just nice. flies down the stairs. Yeah, so just... how... <laughs> <laughs> Can you do, but can you describe your action? I think like I don't think Chris is going to do anything like showy or fancy. He's he's trying to save his newfound friend, so he's from a greasy child apparently. So he's going to, you know, take a big leap. Yeah, all right. Just take you a take, nice big leap. You take your big leap and moments after Cosmo two at a time comes down to join you in the lobby. Eloise is up next and Eloise is going to burst out of the RV and uh going to try and grab you again there, Iris. Uh, well, I'm literally running, so... <laughs> Alright, so if you're, st if you're still attempting to flee, I'm going to have you make another dex roll. You said dex roll? Mm-hmm. Oh, I did not pass that. Sweet. Alright, so you actually kind of trip. Uh, and as you do, something wraps itself around your ankle. It is soft and slimy and disgusting and as you Ooh. fall to the ground i am gonna need you to take uh three points of damage uh because your fall is aided in part by uh greasy child magoo Ew. who uh now has you restrained outside of the rv in the parking lot Yuck. check check this child for the frog amulet they're displaying very frog-like tendencies <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this, this this child is acting very froggy. My whole my whole like weird plot for this adventure really just boils down to a throwaway character talking about a frog amulet. That was the big <laughs> clue that you guys needed to pick up on. Glad you uh glad you picked up on it. I got it trapped in the old Nagarino. The old Nagarino. Iris, how would you like to respond to being thrown to the floor and currently restrained around the ankle? Um she just has me by one ankle. Yeah, just by one ankle, but you're on the I'm ground. I'm going to do something that is frowned upon by society, and I'm going to kick that child. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the episode. No, it won't be. Uh, okay, great. Uh, and in response to your kick, uh, Eloise is going to try and uh, like punch you in the stomach. Yeah, She's very short. Uh, that's another hard success. Uh... Please need some behavioral therapy. Um, For real. What what are you having me roll? Fighting brawl? The fighting brawl, yep. Okay, cool. Um, a hard success? Great. All right. Well, that's attacker's choice, so go ahead and roll your fighting brawl. Excellent. Uh, uh, I've rolled that dice so hard that it left me. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, that'll be a three. Oh, good. Excellent. Um, I have bad news for you, though, Iris. Your foot sinks into Eloise's stomach. Ew! Like a nasty-ass, greasy liquid. It does Ew. not seem to have made much of an impact at all. And furthermore, that grip is held tight. In yeah. their stomach? In the stomach. Like it, like the the stomach of the child wrapped around where they planted their foot. Mm-hmm. Kind of like quicksand. That's a frog. 
What the fuck is this? What is this thing? Kill it. Murder it. What is this? On camera. On camera. Whatever his name was. Yeah, Greasy Steve. Steve, not Eloise the child. This is Greasy Cheese the dead man. (laughs) Oily Greg? Is that what you're talking about? Oily Greg! Oh my god! I called it at the end of last episode. This is Oily Greg. Wait! Do you think that Kitty cheated on her husband with, with oily, oily Greg? Greg. <laughs> no, I don't. And made, and made oily Greg. They made Green Eloise the follow-up. <laughs> oily Greg and his new daughter, Greasy Eloise. <laughs> oily, oily Greggy and Greasy Eloise. <laughs> Greasy Eloise is pretty oh, good. Uh, that's the name of this episode. <laughs> Chris and Cosmo, uh, despite the early hour of the morning, as you run into the lobby, you see a, a, a massive line of people uh, backed up towards the entrance um, who are slowly being serviced uh, when they're not yelling at Stone Porter for uh, not being able to direct them to the actual location of the hotel. Uh, how would you like to try and make your way through this crowd of people? Probably. Wait, wait. This might be a bad idea. But follow my lead. I give Chris a look uh, as we're wa- as we're like approaching this line, and they literally go, "Follow my lead." Oh All right, man, that, that got completely cut out. Um, god so damn it! I-, <laughs> I said, "Oh my god, it's a fire!" <laughs> All right. Oh my god, it's a fire. Great. Uh ah, what fire? What Evacuate! Evacuate! And I'm running. You're running. I'm yeah, I'm pushing running through people. I'm running, running in this running. lobby. You're running through the crowd that you literally just whipped up into a frenzy because now <laughs> everyone is panicking and rushing towards the door. Yeah, so we're all just going out together. Yeah. But okay. I'm also pushing through people. Great. I'm going to have you both make dexterity checks and strength checks. Good thing oh. Cosmo. Oh god, Cosmo, no. Cosmo, no. <laughs> you got to see how bad Cosmo's strength is. Okay. Ah, oh, motherfuck, that is an extreme success for dexterity. Okay. And for, uh, oh, they failed that strength roll, actually. I should have um, swapped them, damn it. I got a hard success for dex and then just a regular success for strength. All right, Chris, you are shoving people out of the way left and right as you are booking it towards the door. Cosmo, you have a clear path behind Chris's wake of destruction. Uh, But unfortunately, you find yourself kind of caught in the flood of people and you can't really break yourself out. But I am moving towards the exit just slowly, right? Just slowly. But Chris, you burst out of the door. And, uh, well... I'm gonna I'm gonna add you into combat here, and yeah. I assume Cosmo will be uh, joining shortly. Uh, but me first, coach. Uh, and you come out to see Eloise try and bring down another fist on Iris. Iris, how would you hey. like to react? You are down on the ground. Uh, you have a foot inside of Greasy Eloise. Um, where's she trying to punch me? In the tum tum. Um her arms long enough to reach that can i just extend my legs to keep her away from me so that she's stuck in my feet can she yeah she's kind of like very limber very like loose like a goose oh well in that case i'm just gonna be flailing my legs around all right so i'll have you yeah you can roll to make it harder again. Again. yeah <laughs> fight and brawl again a got hard me. success. All right, I also got a hard success. Uh, so you're going to get punched in the punch for another two points of damage. Gosh. Uh, and it is your turn, so how would you like to follow that up? Um, can I, like, since she's attacked... Since, let me start that over. Since she's attached to my feet, um, and I've just kind of been flailing around, can I, like, kick my feet into the ground to just kind of, like... St- squisher a little bit dex roll to get your balance back and a strength roll to accomplish this okay uh versus just strength from eloise uh the strength or the dex was a pass and you said a strength after that yep oh um the strength is an extreme success i cannot express to you how it's literally a two and it could have been a one that is still very good so you right yourself uh and kind of stamp down into squishy child magoo 
Um, can you roll your fighting brawl uh, damage for me? Uh, that's another three. Great. Chris, you see this happening. What would you like to do? Oh, you're stamping a child. What is happening? She's so greasy. Help me. Oh, man. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, oh. oh. Chris, like, runs over. Chris, like, <laughs> runs over and tries to, like, pry this child away from the... <laughs> I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to pry the child off of the foot. Please try and pry the child off. Make a strength roll. Uh, Eloise is gonna start flailing and sock you as you're doing this. Yo, I will literally throw you. Uh, that's an extreme success. Great. You uh, pluck Eloise away. Iris, you gain control over your limbs. And Chris, you are now holding a very greasy, squishy looking devil child. Can I, like, put this greasy, nasty child into, like, a half Nelson or possibly a full Nelson? <laughs> you can do... <laughs> Medium to large Nelson? Medium to large Nelson, maybe? <laughs> uh, not yet, but keep that on the back burner. Okay, 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 uh, okay. Cosmo, you finally push your way out of the crowd, uh, who is now uh, away from the supposed fire and is uh, kind of starting to gather around grease child and the two people who are attempting to restrain her what would you like this to do looks bad. <laughs> um i approach my group uh and i say what's happening did you guys find that feral child <laughs> <laughs> i point <laughs> oh it's so greasy chris's arms uh cosmo goes ha ha Mommy! And I start looking around for Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy! Uh, is uh, Kitty anywhere in this crowd? You know, her mother? Yes, her mother, who I did establish was staying at the hotel, burst to the front of the crowd and is like, Eloise, you put her down right now! Your child uh, just attacked me, ma'am. Mom? This is a greasy child. <laughs> Mom, help! Put the child down. Looks like we found the mother. Oh, um, Chris is ma like... <laughs> Ma'am, we have some concerns about your daughter breaking and entering into my friend's literal house and attacking them. She looks at you and she says, You... You're the one who came to my house yesterday. And you're the one who called fire in the lobby. Yeah, because I had a fire problem. But, like, I came outside, and your fucking child attacking my friend. Mom, help. Mom, I... I they... Oh, Chris has already put the child down. He's yeah. like... He like... Um, so Eloise runs over back to Kitty, and I'm actually going to switch scenes real quick here. Uh, as people sort of realize, oh, there's, there's no fire. There was just a child fight happening. Uh, where is it? It's over here. Okay. We love a we love a casual child fight. Who's still here? There. That doesn't children. look like Eloise. So yeah, as as Eloise goes back over to Kitty, you realize that the sort of weird grease appears to have completely dissipated, and she looks normal. Maybe still a little feral, but she was always kind of feral. Uh, she's back to normal. Lady, you gotta keep better track of your kids. I need to... You need to not attack and try and restrain my children. You're lucky I don't call the police on you Hold on. For you that. were sleeping... Hold on a second. You're gonna yell at me and threaten to call the police on me, but you were the one who let your child leave the hotel room, wander out of the hotel, and break into my RV, and you're gonna call the police on me? Do you have any evidence that Eloise broke into your RV? rv and attacked you? yes i do why do you think she was in the parking lot you think i broke into your hotel room at three in the morning to steal your child and fist fight her in the parking lot well i don't know but i'd Who appreciate in their right normal mind would do that i put a hand on iris's shoulder and i say this can probably all be cleared up by the hotel lobby video cameras which would distinctly show your child exiting the room and then if there's any uh you know, cameras out here, 
her breaking into our friend's room. Uh, which is also her hey, house. He, he, Chris like pulls you aside and he's like, we can't be seen on cameras. Cosmo That's goes. look really weird. Cosmo goes. Still turns back. Really fine if yeah. it's just the lobby camera. Cosmo turns back and goes, okay. Okay. Listen. It's 3 a.m. Ma'am, is your child harm in, harmed in any way, shape, or form? Or uh, is she fine? Kitty gets down and says, Eloise, are you okay, sweetie? And Eloise says, yeah, I'm just scared. Okay. Okay. Tensions are high. Clearly, something happened. We will stay away from your child if you keep your child away from us. And there doesn't need to be anything further. If I keep my child... Come on, sweetie. And she takes uh, Eloise by the hand and they go into the elevator. Bye, bitch. Um, Give me a second here. Oh, bloop, bloop. <laughs> I, wait, is, is, is Party Frog still ghosts. here? But yeah, I, I need to fix the lighting bug. Um, yes, part, Party Frog is just like staring at your party. Uh, Good morning. Okay. Hey. Yeah, Crazy any night. Your, any luck finding <laughs> your amulet? Uh, I should be asking you the same question, buddy. You uh, have you have you have my quest. Oh, I thought you were gonna say I have your amulet amulet. Uh, anyway. Uh hey, hey party frog, can I ask you a question? Yo, what's up? Uh have you been here this whole time? Like in this lobby, hanging uh, out? Oh yeah. Did you see that little child walk out by themselves? No. Um she might have crawled down the outside of the building, actually. Ah, oh, yeah, man. Kids are weird like that, dude. Fuck. She did, like, this spider crawl thing when she was in my RV where she, like, kind of crawled on all fours up the wall and then onto the ceiling. So. Ew. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> like, who you does should, that? You should probably, like, clean... <laughs> your walls and ceiling how am i gonna do that that's not a it's place an, people walk it's an rv what the fuck is happening in this town uh I, i'm gonna like I'm, I'm gonna go back to bed no you can't because we were doing something in like i checked my watch minutes <laughs> But I'm tired. Come on, I grab oh, his hand. I grab too. his hand and start dragging him out the door. I'm like, come on. A child just punched the fuck out of me, and you're tired. Oh, watch I, you! I had to put that child in a headlock. That was that was gross. <laughs> My three quarter Nelson took it out of me. Um, <laughs> I turn to I turn to Party Frog as we're leaving, um, and I ask, "Oh, uh, Party Frog, I'm sorry. Last last question for me. Um, that amulet you have us looking for." Does it turn people weird and greasy? Not any more weird and greasy than they already are. By which I mean, no, it doesn't. It's it has great okay. importance to my frog, my frog brethren. <laughs> but okay. it's not some sort of cursed magical frog amulet. No. Whatever that means. Okay. Um, we exit because I drag everyone out. Party up. <laughs> It is night in Blar Harbor. It is about 3 a.m. Okay. What would you like to do? Where would you like to go? We're going to go stake out um, the mannequin place. The wooden palace? Yes. Okay, sure. That was, that was... our plan, right? So go see if anything weird happens at 3 a.m.? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, in fact, you guys just walk right down the street. Yep. Uh, around the corner it's pretty quiet there's like a handful of touristy people making their way around um but it's very peaceful and as we so... walk oh go ahead sorry as we're walking past the church of cash money danger mcstinky um i turn to chris and iris and i say i really can't believe they let this cult like get into this town have you guys heard about this thing it's like everywhere in connecticut uh, yeah. I mean, when... I've heard of it before. It's not like underground or anything. No, but it's bananas, and I'm surprised <laughs> to see a. I'm surprised to see a pretty big, dedicated building here in this weirdly small town in Maine. You know, some people who can do what they want, I guess. They sure Which can. Includes churches for cults. 
I, I guess so. I guess I just passing early judgment. It does. I, I'm not surprised that uh, it, with everything happening here, uh, that there is that there is a church dedicated to this guy. <laughs> I had like this whole fucking episode booked off for combat and I'm so glad I did a little bit more because you uh, created a fucking scene outside of a public established building with my evil greasy child fight in typical typical tin fashion, of course. Listen, we're all dramatic. We're always all dramatic. It doesn't matter how undramatic our characters are. We're dramatic. (laughs) We go around screaming fire. It's fine. Cosmos just like, what's the fastest way to get everyone out of this building right now? Ooh, a fire. <laughs> so are you like approaching? Like where, what are you trying to accomplish right now? I think we're literally just walking down the sidewalk. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, there is there is a light on inside the uh, the retail shop, um, but it's pretty hard to see inside the windows. There's a light on, but it's hard to see? Yeah, you know, like you can tell there's a light on, but you, it's like there's like blinds, you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. What store has blinds? These guys. One that's like built out of a house, probably. That's yeah, true. Like... It does have built out of a house vibes. Oh, I love built out of house vibes. Uh, can Chris like listen to see if there's anybody in there accompanying the light? Yeah. Why don't you roll listen? Um, but you're gonna have to make a hard success or better. Yeah, that's fine. I, I actually have points in listen, so that works. Nice. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. That is a hard success. Oh, nice. All right. So you put your ear up against the door, and you do indeed hear some kind of a rustling. Oh, is it? Uh, did I get a good enough good enough success to tell if it's like a uh, uh, human rustling? It does sound like a human rustling. rustling. It doesn't sound like greasy rustling. Okay. So, all right, guys. So it's, there's like somebody in here, but it's like human. It's not grease. It's human. Can I roll spot hidden for um, another vantage point with a clearer view? Like a, like a window that's not obscured? I don't know if that would be spot hidden. Maybe I will have you roll intelligence mm. yeah success yeah success all right um the only light that's on is this one mm-hmm. um they like the whole store is not illuminated or anything you can't really get a better view inside from your current perspective or like even if you loop around real quick. Um, I turn to the others and I say an alarm noise comes out of my mouth. Um <laughs> <laughs> I turn to the others and I say do, do we knock? Should we just straight up knock? Um What if it's a mannequin? <laughs> Although we beat him up. Mannequin yeah. style. Yeah. Man- <laughs> do they have their hours posted outside somewhere yeah it's fucking 9 a.m to 7 p.m oh they're definitely open um, guys, guys, i have it i have let's it let's knock that's okay we all knock all at the same time we all knock <laughs> yeah In we all knock okay. we fashion. synchronize this is our group thing is we do <laughs> things together <laughs> <laughs> right after you split the party and almost got someone killed we it's do fine. things I'm, together i'm Sorry that Iris has a small fan house that we only met them for the first time literally today. I didn't want to sleep in their van where they could just drive off with us. All right. (laughs) So you knock on the door and uh, Josephine, the scarfed woman who you met earlier today, uh, Cosmo opens the door and says, hello. Hello. How are you? good is everything okay i and you guys look and you see like a fire truck like race around the corner towards the hotel <laughs> oh yeah there's some drama going on at the hotel we oh saw a goodness. light on just wanted to make sure everything was all right in here no no nothing weird by chance 
No, everything's fine. I just didn't have time to close up shop before the presentation tonight, so I'm cleaning up shop. 3 a.m.? I got a little distracted. By what? By what? By... She kind of, like, motions for you to enter. I come in. Oh, I walk in. Yeah. Shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Let's buy some man. No, I don't want mannequins. I'm like pulling some coupons out, and I'm like, I did. Who bring is that, me Max? Who is that? <laughs> no, Who is in here with her? It was Barnabas, but he's not supposed to be here at night. I don't know why he's here. Mm. <laughs> he just like was there for a second. He's like, oh fuck. <laughs> it was just the mirage of him. <laughs> <laughs> There's still bugs. Okay, it's not a perfect application. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. Right, I'm sorry. So you guys enter the wooden palace, which has a. Uh, these like really nasty looking fucking mannequins on display like they're not even very well made um there's other wooden knickknacks there's like some wooden dice and a little wooden rocking horse mm -hmm. and josephine kind of leads you in and says i just get lost in the magic of it all sometimes the magic of mannequins the... well yes they're quite wonderful if you think about it these sort of representations of humankind, and you can do quite a lot with a mannequin, you know. Like, That's true, actually. You make a good point. Uh, so, uh, go up to the least grungy-looking mannequin, and I say, so how much is this mannequin? That is a great question. Now, each one of our mannequins is priced according to uh, weight, uh, material, and effort used in it. I am procrastinating because I wrote down how much a mannequin is, but I don't remember off the top of my head. Just give me one moment, please. She says as she shuffles through her notebook. Yeah, she's like uh, rifling through receipts. Yeah, she looks down at the uh, mannequin's base and says, oh, this one's $250. I pull out eight coupons, um, and I say, how much is it if I use all of these coupons? Um, free, technically. I, I give her the, the coupon, and I grab the mannequin. <laughs> okay, she kind of looks at the coupons, looks at you, looks at the mannequin, and says, uh, okay, we're not Thank really you. open Mm -hmm. That's all right. I, I won't be long. So, um, <laughs> um, I, I I know this is strange, and I know, to be honest, I know we're strange. Um, uh, but I'm asking for like a good and honest reason. Have you noticed anything particularly odd recently? She sighs and says, "The whole town seems on edge recently. It's like everyone's picking fights with each other." so weird did, when did this start do you know just a few days ago and a question to add in to here just for my own curiosity when's the last time someone bought a mannequin it's entirely unrelated trust me i promise i swear <clears throat> uh and she goes over to like the receipts and she's like flipping through them oh boy it's been a little while a uh, mannequin proper, oh, maybe about four weeks ago. Are you at liberty to disclose who purchased it? I don't have any information on who purchased it, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, like, do you remember who purchased it? Just a tourist, I think. Hmm. Okay. None of the townspeople oh. are very interested in the mannequins, if that's what you're asking. Okay. Is there... Again, I, I apologize if this is, again, strange. I should it... probably lock up. I'd like to go home if that's okay. Sure. Uh, I start hauling my mannequin slowly to the door. <laughs> slowly. Uh, as I make my way towards it, I go, Is there anyone off the top of your head that's been particularly off these last few days anyone who might have a grievance perhaps besides the scarlets i know the scarlet house burned down i tell you what that bosco fellow a real piece of work never much cared for them and now all this business i've heard the rumors that they're responsible 
I'm not surprised. Have you met Bosco? Of course. I mean, they seemed pretty chill when I met them. <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving. I give them a long, pointed look, and I say, That's very true. Can I please lock up? It's like I'm still heading for the, I'm still heading for the door. I say I apologize. My small and nerdy arms were made for studying space and lifting telescopes. I haven't had to carry out a um a peek around a uh, genuine 100% uh uh birchwood mannequin with horse leather linings. She turns towards Chris and says would you be able to give your friend a hand? Chris, like... I hold out my like, hand. You can hold my hand out for a high five. I, he gives her a high five. He gives you a high five, and then he, like, pretends to pick it up, and he's like, no, nah, I can't do it. Sorry. Uh, that was all the support I need. I get marginally faster. <laughs> okay. Just... <laughs> so give me, give me a timeline. How long does it take you to take this mannequin to the door? Another 30 seconds after we have that awkward, mm, judgmental look at each other. Um, okay. And then I'm wait for my two friends to get on either side of me, and I'd like to exit in succession. All right. <laughs> Is the door big enough for this? We'll, we'll make, make it fit. <laughs> two of us are quite small. Chris, I think you're just quite tall, so if we all just, like, power squeeze with our new bestie, uh, the uh, Birchwood uh, horse leather mannequin uh, on our genuine way out. horse leather. Why does it need to be genuine horse leather? <laughs> because it was expensive. <laughs> Cost me eight coupons. <laughs> you literally have hundreds of them. I know. All right, you all exit, and uh, Josephine doesn't so much as utter a good night as she closes and locks the door. Um, and you hear the continued sounds of shuffling from the other side. Uh, now that we're outside, um, <laughs> I'd like to press my ear back to the door and listen. <laughs> There's there's no sounds. It's just kind of the shuffling, and then you hear a, a distinct click of the light switch as a uh, the wooden palace goes dark. I don't have an indication to make it go dark, but that light is now off. <laughs> right. Uh, well, in that case, I help Cosmo and again <laughs> as we're slowly walking with our oh so heavy mannequin. I do want to like peer around the corner because I can see that there's um two sides to the store that you can look past. Um, I would like to peer around the corner and see if I can spot um, perhaps employee parking. Employee parking? Sure, there's employee parking. Cool. Do I see Josephine making her way to her car? Yeah, she's making her way to her car. Cool, as we're walking so slow, I would just like to like watch this. Okay, she gets in a blue uh, blurred Blison. One day we're gonna have to pick a different letter to start everything with. Blentra. Blue and... Blison Blentra. No, blue Blord Blison Blentra. Blord <laughs> Blison Blentra. Blord God damn it, Blison my pen died. had a had a merger baby. Now they're Blord Blison. Um, blue blue Abu Di Abu Dai, and uh, she drives away. Okay, I start carrying the mannequin like a normal person. Great. Uh, I would like to pose this problem to you because it's very crystal clear that there is a uh, fire truck parked outside of the hotel. And uh, Cosmo and Chris, you both did cause civil unrest and uh, filed a false fire report. No, I, I said file. I, I didn't say I didn't. Uh, I did not file anything i yelled oh my god it's a fire and attempted to exit the building i didn't say where the fire was i didn't say help my room's on fire i just said it's a fire and i was very much talking about a bluetooth video i saw the other day as i was talking to my friend um uh, and then I was... some... i'm sorry i'm sorry no no please i was just saying i was just saying i was saying file like single file like everybody move, move out of the way i was talking about how like I couldn't believe the game. It was so fire. It's a fire. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and everyone panicked. And I went outside what and my friend, my, my friend was getting fist fought by a child. So um, I go back to walking really slowly. It's <laughs> like <laughs> so start sledding. All right. So um, I just, uh, guys, I, I don't want to, I just want to let you know um, that despite your incredible legal theory 
Uh, Legal and, theory, I didn't file jack shit. I'm sorry. Legally, file, we didn't file, file anything. Isn't, file isn't the right word for it. But if you yell fire... Uh, that's only that's, in movie theaters that that's illegal. No, you can actually yell it in a crowded theater, too. Here's the thing. If it leads to uh, any injury uh, or civil unrest, you can be charged with disorderly conduct, inciting a riot, or other serious charges. There's I guess no reason have to you be, can't just go into a place and uh, yell fire. But I guess it'd have to... Yeah, everybody's rested. It's not see, civil unrest. I'm, I'm, I, think, I think we can get away with it. <laughs> Hope so, I kept following their lead. <laughs> I guess you're right. So if anyone's even out there to be like, they called it, there's no evidence. So it's it's like 3.30 in the morning as you guys mm -hmm. finally are able to make your way back to bed. Are you going to do so? Yes. Yeah. All right. And then that I bring means... my mannequin, you but I put him in mannequin. the closet. He goes in the closet. <laughs> Don't bring him in the bed. No, I put him in the closet where he's safe. It is now okay. your second morning in Blar Harbor. You do have an Let's appointment at 11.30 on Sick Rick's Big Dick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is um, there like a continental breakfast here? Yes. There is a continental breakfast. Thank God. Do is it you, good? Do you partake in the continental breakfast? Chris like wakes up before everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And he, like, drops off muffins at Iris's RV and, like, <laughs> brings up, like, food to the hotel room and then goes back to sleep for a little bit. Ah, so, Cosmo, you awaken and seemingly, like magic, the Continental Breakfast Elves have blessed you with a full platter. I look over at Chris, who's definitely still asleep, uh, <laughs> and I split my breakfast in half and I eat oh, about half of it. That's so sweet. And Iris, you wake up in the morning, and the Continental Breakfast Ferry has delivered muffins to your RV. Wow. Do you step in them? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it's always <laughs> muffins. It's a, it's a throwback to season two, where someone just keeps putting muffins on my fucking... <laughs> um, I'm eating them. That's breakfast, baby. It's breakfast, baby. And uh, do you all meet back up in the lobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. If you choose to... Uh, we can either do one activity to wrap things up before your appointment, or we can fast forward to 1130 in your appointment. Now, we definitely need to do something. We definitely need to become friends with someone else or get more information. Like, anything we can do to get more stuff, we gotta. Definitely okay. don't. I, I'm making a point um, not to look in Kitty Scarlet's direction at all. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Well, I will not be acknowledging Kitty Scarlet ever again. <laughs> The town Until the, we inevitably have to. The town is open for you all. Where would you like to go? Where are we going, boys? Where are we dropping, boys? Okay, let's see. Josephine's really... suspicious. We could go talk to Bosco again. Because Cosmo hasn't met Bosco. Um, and they, I think they'd like to. Mostly just so I can join in on your public opinion of Bosco. Because Cosmo has no public opinion of Bosco. Sure. <laughs> All right, it. you guys head Yo, over. Fried sea creatures for brunch. Yum. You once again you walk right down the oh, street convenient. to the Red <laughs> Velvet Clams Casino, <laughs> and uh, inside, the door is unlocked. Uh, and as the three of you push your way in, Giuseppe stares at you, Chris, <laughs> and he says, "Wahoo!" Is that? Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, we like makes it flying motion. <laughs> he, he scurries away back into the kitchen. I lean right. into Cosmo and I say, last time we were here, mm -hmm. Chris, uh, airplaned that man. What was he choking? <laughs> Good, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean that's what? the Cali that's the California Heimlich maneuver, but yeah. I mean like I've never seen that outside of California. I don't, don't know if do anyone's it. actually ever survived the California Heimlich maneuver. Um, I think it makes it worse. <laughs> it's more of a concept. why are you doing it? <laughs> I mean, like, it's, I feel like it's more like a waterboarding thing. Actually. And the fact that you have to airplane someone into a water like a, a, mm -hmm. a like a like a little kiddie pool. Mm -hmm. 
if you, I mean, if you're in a restaurant, you just have to keep splashing them with water and then do just, the motion. <laughs> you have to motion the waiter over and get the water pitcher from them. Dump it on them. The shock unlodges the food. Ew, <laughs> That's yeah. how it works. Okay. Anyway, uh, I go up to uh, buy. <laughs> can I take a look around for little buckets? Did you say leave with them? Uh, no, there there are little buckets. Uh, oh, thank God. I'm going to choose to ignore them, and I'm going to start grabbing creatures out of the pool with my hands. Uh, can you roll dexterity? Yep. I'll Sweet. grab a bucket, and I specifically only collect <laughs> crabs. I find little crabs, and I'm like, a scoop. I Does collect the crabs. <laughs> All right, Iris, you have a hand of a uh, handful of little fun sea critters. I How many crabs Bosco. do I get? Four. I go to Bosco with my four crabs. Bosco looks down at your four crabs and looks over at all of the cooking equipment, which is currently off. <laughs> when do you open? Uh, they point towards the door where you can see a sign that says open at 2 p.m. I look at you... my watch that I don't have. What time is it? 9 a.m. Can I leave these with you and come back later for them? Or they, will I have to catch them again? <laughs> they hesitantly grab your bucket. No, you're <laughs> holding them. You're just holding yes. raw sea critters. <laughs> yes. They hesitantly <laughs> hold out their hands for you to place the sea critters. I, I deposit them into their hands. Uh, they dump them in a pot and then walk over and scoop the pot full of salt water. You're my hero. They salute <laughs> you. I know who we're stealing. Okay. Um... <laughs> Uh, I was like, anyone but Bosco, please, wait. And then I've met Bosco, and I'm like, oh, god damn it! I love Bosco. <laughs> <laughs> Bosco kind of, like, hesitantly turns back away from you and, like, starts washing more dishes. Why? B Bosco, wait, if you guys open at 2, why are you here at 9? Uh... Bosco motions to the pile of dishes and prep work they undoubtedly have to do. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Well, hold on a second. I go to where Giuseppe ran off to. Okay, around, like, the <laughs> corner. All right. You see him, like, hiding in a corner. So it's just you and Bosco that works here? Yes, uh, seven days a week. Uh. And you make them watch all the dishes and cook all the food? Well, no, normally, well... Bosco is a very talented. They, they work hard. But no, I help her with the dishes when there's not psychopaths delivering West Coast CPR to me. Well, are you getting West Coast CPR right now? No. Why are you here five hours before you open and Bosco's the only one doing the dishes? Get out of there. Whoa! He goes back <laughs> over and starts to, starts to help with the dishes. <laughs> should we, like... Are we, should we, like... To talk to Bosco while we're here? Or are we just giving him a secret of soul dog? Well, I was gonna talk to him. I, I was pulling my phone out and pulling up the notes app um, so I could ask Bosco a question and have them type out their more informative answer. Uh, but then their boss came back and I was like, well, you can have you can be doing that while I'm uh, harassing Giuseppe in the corner. Okay, well, I was or just Chris harassing... Just make a CPR motion at him. Like making <laughs> CPR motions, I, um, I hold out my phone to Bosco and um, I say... Uh, Type, um, do you know why anyone or who would want to frame you? They stare at your phone that you no longer have a keyboard access to because Lola took everyone's phones over. Lola. <laughs> yeah. I turn, I, Lola, why are you not, um, accessible for the mute? Oh my gosh, that is a fundamental flaw in my pro... I am going to file a complaint right away with the CEO of Blue Bling. Okay, can, Lola, can you... No. <laughs> I put uh... Lola away. <laughs> I pull out. I pull out three coupons. <laughs> and a pen. Okay, great. And I asked the same question to Bosco, um, which was, do you know who or why would someone want to frame you for the 
the scarlet thing. And I give, I give them the paper and the pen. They gently take the coupons and the pen and they write N O colon, uh, left parenthesis. (laughs) I take the coupon back. I stare at it. I look at them. It's a little frowny face. It's a, it's a little frowny face. <laughs> it's a little <laughs> winking frowny face. Oh, Cosmo goes, oh! <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you actually, like, typoed your, ta- your, your writing. I thought you typoed that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they shake their head. Um. Fuck. I turn back to Chris and I say, I don't. That was kind of it. I Oh, uh, here, can I have the wrist? Can I have the coupon? Yeah, I give him a different coupon. I still have oh. about 300 other coupons. Oh, thank God. We have so much writing space. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up to Bosco and I'm like, Bosco, can I can I ask you a question really fast? They nod. Sick. Uh, so there, so you don't know anybody who would like want to go out? Like, there, There's nobody who would want to be out to get you. But like, have you noticed... Anything we anybody weird anybody that like ugh, this is gonna sound weird anybody that looks like you they kind of tilt their head uh it's a long shot you got like a twin brother or something they shake their head oh wait wait Fuck. Bosco um this is a yes or no question you don't have to write this down do you ever find yourself like going out at night or are you more do you not go out at night they shake their head. You no, you like an indoor kind of person. They nod. Uh, although they they do raise a finger, and they they I, motion for. Uh, I give them the coupon and and a pen. They write, "Today's an exception." Then they write, "S R B D." Sick Rick's big dick. Oh my god, they're coming. Bosco, are you going on the boat? They nod eagerly. Oh, we're like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Do you want to ride with, you ride with us, Bosco? We're literally going there after this. They, like, look excited towards, like, the sink, and then they start nodding again. <laughs> nice. Uh, Do you have to finish the dishes before you can go? No, no, no. Giuseppe can do that. Oh. Uh, I come back over with Giuseppe, who looks upset. He does look upset. <laughs> thank you for thank you for filling in the gaps there. He does look upset. I turn to Giuseppe and I I look at the three dishes that are in the sink. Um, and I say, "Isn't this your restaurant?" He he shoes he shoes you all out. He shoes you all out. Get out! Of, get out of here! I go. Does right. Bosco come? Bosco comes with you and yay! You start making your way towards the sea. To ride on Sick Rick's big dick out to Blunken by the Sea next Bosco's time. Bosco's going to become our giant new friend, isn't he? Aren't they? Going to be the uh, next Blorbo. It is going to be the next Blorbo. <laughs> I was literally just thinking that. They look like a Blorbo. This is my new Blorbo, Bosco. <laughs> Bosco the Blorbo. I didn't get many notes this session, but I did write down Giuseppe doesn't like CPR. <laughs> that was a he good He does note. not... He doesn't like CPR, guys. I think that was very helpful, yeah. Thank you to Mango, Amanda Crondar, Morgan Woolbrink, Emmy Laderna, Smarties, Charlie Rose, and Adam Carpenter for their continued support of the show. You can join us at patreon.com slash tincast. You can sign up for a free trial. You can get all sorts of bonus content, episodes, and other shenanigans. Big thank you this week to Discord user Some Nerd, also known as Max Sells NFTs. I, I don't, but that's... That's their name uh, for this incredible season three art of the characters, which you can see if you're watching us on YouTube. Uh, Please like, subscribe, comment, follow the show on whatever you use to listen to this on. It helps us out tremendously. And please tell a friend about This Isn't Normal. We will see you next Monday for the next episode of The Reflection Game. And until then, stay safe, drink lots of water, and have a great week.